Yo, what up? This is Josh Room from East West Sailing and Performance. Today, I want to talk about age pigment in lipo fuskin. Now, I'm kind of burnt out on doing YouTube, to be honest with you. I just don't have a lot of ideas. I'm so busy with my business. I'm so busy with clients. The Metabolic Blueprint, you can check it out on our website. School, got a lot going on, so it's really hard to come up with ideas. I just need something to talk about so I can talk. So what I've decided to do is, I have hundreds of newsletters from Ray Pete, dating back to the 80s and 90s. So what I'm going to do is, as I read them, and I've read a lot of them, I'm going to go back to them, take some notes, and really just talk about a newsletter and the information on it to share with you guys as I read them. So hopefully you can get something from his research, get my interpretation from reading his research, so I can share this information with you and add some of my own tidbits to the information. So today is about age pigment. It's from his newsletter called Age Pigment, Cause and Effect of Aging and Stress from 1998. Now what is age pigment? Now according to Ray, it's a seroid pigment, age pigment, or liver spots as most people call them. The bottom line is according to Ray, it's a factor in aging. Now, the little kind of like, they look like big moles or they look like big freckles that appear on people's, typically their abdomen, their neck, uh, on their face, along, along here on the face. And these are signs of aging. Now, what is lipofuscin? It's a fancy word. L-I-P-O-F-U-S-C-I-N. Now, according to Ray, lipofuscin, now there's not a lot of people out there that talk about lipofuscin. A lot of people talk about age spots or liver spots, things like that. Basically what it is, it's estrogen plus iron plus unsaturated fats in the body. Now I've talked about estrogen. We have it hormonally, men and women. It's not a female hormone. This can be raised from taking birth control pills, exogenous sources, plastics, environmental factors, dioxins. It can be raised from unsaturated fats because they have the same action in the body in regards to uh, their effect on the hormonal system, immune system, and cell metabolism. Estrogen can be raised and be unopposed by progesterone. Any times of stress will lower progesterone. The body's inability to detox estrogen from a protein deficiency, biliary overload, biliary stasis, gut issues, endotoxin, all these things can increase estrogen. Um, being progesterone deficient from aging and not eating the right foods, I mean the list goes on. How do we get iron? Well, we accumulate iron as we age. It's bound to ferritin. We can't actually de get rid of it. The only way you can get rid of it, basically, is from bleeding heavily, like when you get your menstrual cycle, or if you're in a car accident and you bleed out heavily, or if you give blood. And there's things, of course, I talked about in my last YouTubes that you can do, like drinking coffee between meals, um, just basic things like that could help prevent the reabsorption of iron in the small intestine. And then unsaturated fats, I've talked about this at length in many of my YouTubes. A lot of your, you know, canola oils, fish oils, collard oils, all these different types of vegetable oils. Above ground vegetables are high in unsaturated fats and below ground vegetables, things like that. So you want to eliminate those from your diet. So all those th three things together basically form lipofuscin. Now there was a study done by Gritsk and Radko, and they showed that a diet high in unsaturated fats and low in vitamin E actually produce lipofuscin. Now, if you think about it, the one thing unsaturated fats do in the body, among other things, affecting cell uh, respiration by blocking sugar from getting in the cell, they block the electron transport chain, they inhibit cytochrome oxidase, so they can't produce energy. Your cells can't produce energy. So it affects cellular respiration at a deeper level. But one thing unsaturated fats do beside that is actually they pull vitamin E out of the blood and push it into the tissue. So they essentially create a vitamin E deficiency. Now, vitamin E does a lot for the body. And I've talked about how the use of saturated fats are not only protective against unsaturated fats, but they actually decrease the body's need for vitamin E. Now, vitamin E and estrogen have kind of like an antagonistic effect. That's why taking vitamin E or eating foods with vitamin E are very important. So if you're deficient in vitamin E, what happens is estrogen is unopposed. And vitamin E actually brings oxygen to all the tissues of your body. And your cells need oxygen. And one of the things lipofuscin does is it actually causes uh, oxygen deprivation at the cell level. But so does estrogen. So estrogen actually pulls nutrients and oxygen away from all your tissues, your uterus, the fetus, everything in, in your cell and causes oxygen deprivation, which can lead to fertility issues, um, uh, endometriosis, blood sugar handling issues, 
uh, swelling edema, myxedema. Um, it can lead to heavy clotting, eclampsia, many things it can lead to. So you want to think about that because a diet in high in unsaturated fats will decrease vitamin E and lead to lipofuscin and cause estrogen dominance and progesterone deficiency where a diet high in saturated fats and foods and vitamin E can actually prevent and help you, I could say, get rid of lipofuscin. And I'll talk about this towards the end because a lot of time lipofuscin is actually on the surface. Ray talks about how through his own research he found lipofuscin actually pigment in the uterus itself. So I'll get to that. Ray noticed through his research in 1954 that women on the birth control pill developed brown spots on their face. He noticed that it was estrogen that was actually producing uh, actually excess melanin in the skin. And he also noticed that it caused aged pigment in the uterus itself. So a lot of the times it's internally, more in the uterus, but a lot of the times it's on the face, as I mentioned. Now, if we talk about melanin, Melanin is an antioxidant in the body. I've talked about many antioxidants, glutathione, cholesterol, all these things in the body that we have, but it's about eliminating the pro-oxidative things externally that we're putting onto our body and taking in instead of taking antioxidants because we have the system. The body is a system of systems. Let it do what it's designed to do. You don't need to take crap of antioxidants. So melanin, melanin is an antioxidant that is basically protective against oxidative injury. And estrogen itself promotes Melanin, estrogen pr basically causes oxidative injury. So when Ray noticed that um, women were developing uh, lipofuscin on their face and estrogen itself from the birth control pill or whatever develop excess melanin production in the skin, if we think about it, melanin is an antioxidant that protects against oxidative injury and estrogen actually promotes excess melanin production. Now, as well, Ray talks about how melanin is produced on the skin in the presence of ultraviolet light, and melanin is an antioxidant that is protective against that. At the same time, in the skin, ultraviolet light's primary target, according to Dr. Ray P. PhD, is unsaturated fats, in which they produce free radicals, which produces more melanin, so it actually perpetuates the problem. So estrogen produces melanin. Melanin is protective against oxidative injury from estrogen. We have ultraviolet light, which its primary target in the skin is unsaturated fats, if you have them in your diet, because they're stored in your tissues. That produces excess melanin production that to protect the body. It's a normal protective response. The problem is we produce more melanin, we end up with actually lipofuscin or liver spots. Now, Ray talks about also how lipofus lipofuscin contains a heme group, and metabolism of a heme produces carbon monoxide which produces a respiratory defect at the cell level. Anything that interferes with cellular respiration, now we've talked about many things. It could be a copper deficiency, magnesium deficiency, sodium deficiency. It could be excess calcium and estrogen in the cell. Calcium causes your cells to basically convert glycogen into lactic acid and produce inflammation. Unsaturated fats, all these different things. Anything that interferes with cell metabolism, such as unsaturated fats, estrogen, dioxins, radiation, etc., stimulate porphyrins as an adaptive response to oxygen deprivation at the cell level. What happens is this leads to an increase in hemoglobin and lipofuscin contains a heme group and wastes oxygen. So the bottom line is lipofuscin, if that's confusing, the bottom line is lipofuscin causes a respiratory defect at the cell level because it's been shown that lipofuscin actually respires at the cell level just like our cells do. The problem is they waste oxygen. Our cells want to use oxygen and glucose to produce ATP and water. In the presence of oxygen, so for every um, molecule of oxygen consumed, two molecules of water are actually produced. So if lipofuscin actually causes oxygen deprivation, iron, estrogen, unsaturated fats, all those can do that. What happens now is in the presence of calcium and estrogen as well, because that causes our cells to swell, and become very alkalinic, hold on to calcium, produce lactic acid, not produce ATP and water, lose sodium and potassium and things like that, which essentially is a hallmark sign of hypothyroidism. Now what happens is our mitochondria have a respiratory defect, and it actually causes a dehydration of the mitochondria, but our cells are actually swelling. So now our cells are dehydrated and they're not producing energy in water, and they're actually producing 
excess lactic acid because of lipofuscin producing carbon monoxide instead of using, using carbon dioxide to produce ATP and water. Now, going with that, decreased ATP production and water and carbon dioxide production and utilization causes our cells to swell, as I talked about. Our cells take up calcium. Calcium causes our cells to actually convert glycogen to lactic acid, which perpetuates inflammation and hypothyroidism or many metabolic diseases. Um, and it causes our cells to actually take an estrogen, which actually causes them to swell even more, causes them to become very alkalinic. Now it affects our cells at the deeper level. And now we're not producing energy. We're not using thyroid hormone. We're not using copper. We're not using magnesium. We have this huge respiratory defect. And as I mentioned, it alkalizes the cell, causes the, the cells to actually swell. Just like thyroxine by itself, it actually causes your cells to swell. The problem is when your cells swell, they take up potassium, but they lose water and sodium. So the, this happens because of the presence of aldosterone. The body produces aldosterone to actually conserve water and sodium. The problem, it does this at the expense of losing sodium, magnesium, and other things throughout the body. So it does it as a protective response or adaptation, but at the same time, it can create other vitamin and mineral deficiencies in the body. The best way to regulate aldosterone beside nutrition, nutrition, nutrition is salt. Now, talking about swelling again, we'll go back to the whole swelling thing. When your cells are actually swelling, they actually, they actually begin to take up unsaturated fats more. And unsaturated fats kill the cell because unsaturated fats have a higher affinity for water than saturated fats. So they actually make their well into the way into the cell, causing extreme excitation, and they actually kill the cell itself at the cell level, which leads to free radical production and aging. So I already talked about unsaturated fats have a high affinity for water than, un, and than basically saturated fats. So that's why saturated fats can actually help regulate cell metabolism, regulate cholesterol, pregnenolone synthesis, things like that. Going at the cell again, the cell's basic function or mechanism of adaptation is the production of new proteins in the cell of mitochondria and the destruction of old proteins. Well, Ray talks about how, and this goes into how estrogen actually affects thyroglobulin and the proteolytic enzymes in the thyroid itself and can lead to um, thyroiditis and Hashimoto's. But lipofuscin itself actually inhibits the proteolytic enzymes that help to produce new proteins and break down old proteins. So what basically happens is you have an inhibition of mitochondrial respiration because the cell's not rebuilding, the cell's not breaking down, we're not getting rid of old material, we're not bringing in new material. This leads to free radical production, leads to aging because of the inhibition of mitochondrial respiration. So the lipofuscin itself actually inhibits proteolytic enzymes at the cell level, causing lack of reproduction and destruction of the proteins, which leads to cellular aging. Now, lipofuscin, or a diet high in, in unsaturated fats and vitamin E, as I talked about, can lead to lipofuscin, but also other diseases like cancer, diabetes, and things like that. Now, what do you do? Because I went into this whole long thing. It might be confusing. The bottom line is lipofuscin, unsaturated fats, iron. I did a YouTube on iron, many on unsaturated fats, and estrogen. They affect your cell at the cell level. They inhibit the cells from working properly because they inhibit the proteolytic enzymes. They block cellular respiration. So what are the, some of the things that you can do? Well, the bottom line is some of the remedies, and I'm not going to say how to use them, are vitamin E from our foods or maybe supplements, reducing unsaturated fats in your diet or eliminating them and increasing saturated fats, increasing thyroid production or using the right type of thyroid glandular, increasing progesterone production in the body or maybe taking progesterone, the right type of progesterone, at the right time, the right doses. Iron reduction, you can go to my YouTube on iron. One of the best ways is to limit your intake of, of um, drinking orange juice with meats and liver, reducing your intake of liver, and also drinking coffee between meals to help actually with the reabsorption of iron in the small intestine. As I mentioned, you can increase your saturated fat content like coconut oil, which will actually reduce your need for vitamin E in the body. And as I talked about how unsaturated fats actually decrease vitamin E in the body and how important vitamin E is protective against estrogen. 
You can use other supplements like niacinamide, which prevent lipid peroxidation, which lipofuscin does, and including fruits in your diet and maybe using Epsom salt baths and carbon dioxide like baking soda and things like that. All these things are protective against lipid peroxidation. They're protective against O2 deprivation by increasing carbon dioxide production. They increase cellular respiration. They're antioxidative in nature. They minimize the stress response by regulating adrenaline and cortisol, and they reduce clotting in the body. Now, one of the things you can do if you do have lipofuscin be besides changing your diet, and I can't go into that completely on YouTube, is there's many ways to do it. The things that you need would be non-coated aspirin. You can use niacinamide, pregnenolone powder, progesterone, and coconut oil. Now, I'm not saying you want to make a concoction of all those, but you can use any one of those in any combination with a little bit of water or even a little bit of honey to actually, in a little bowl, make a little solution. Now, the best things I found, according to Ray Pete, would be progesterone, coconut oil, and pregnenolone. And you can make a little, you know, uh, face mask, per se. You can put it all over your face, but actually start putting it on your liver spots every single day. Now, according to Ray, in time, they will actually go away if you're following the right dietary recommendations and eating digestible foods and eliminating unsaturated fats. So hopefully you've enjoyed this YouTube clip. I'm going to do some more on Ray Pete's newsletter, so stay tuned. I'm out of here.